Not long ago, we opened discussion about AMD's OCAT tool, which was a PresentMon update that AMD made. It added an interface to PresentMon, made it a lot easier to use for new API testing and to sort of replace Fraps. And we worked with them on that in a beta stage of the software. And we've also been working with NVIDIA for the last few months on their new software, FCAT VR. Before getting to FCAT VR, this coverage is brought to you by Thermaltake and the new Contac Silent 12 cooler which is a $25 cooler and a competitor to the Hyper 212. So VR benchmarking is actually really hard to do properly. We don't have the full numbers, can't release them yet, but very shortly we'll have the full benchmarks of VR on different video cards. The reason VR benchmarking is hard is because it's not the normal type of testing we do. First of all, the headset has a forced V-Sync of 90 Hertz, and that is for motion sickness reasons among other technical reasons. This means it's difficult to actually measure the true FPS, you have to do some calculations in software side to guess at what the FPS is beyond 90 hertz. And then if you're below 90 hertz, there's another problem. And that problem is when in VR, if below the, uh, if, if you're not meeting the runtime within the designated amount of time, normally 11 milliseconds, to produce a frame, the runtime then has to decide what do I do for this next frame because uh, it's got a few options. One, it can reproject an old frame with no updates. That's what we're calling a warp miss. And in that scenario, that's sort of a worst case. That is when the user experiences absolutely no update to their frames at all. So that means you're seeing the previous frame, which would be comparable to a stutter in traditional FPS benchmarking or gaming. And if you see a previous frame in VR, uh, a couple times anyway, it will eventually start to induce sickness or uneasiness or just not good feelings in your head because you're wearing a thing on your face and it's the only thing you can see. So that's a warp miss. The other thing that we have to measure is a drop frame. A drop frame is when uh, the runtime decides to take a previous frame and then synthesize a new frame by updating the head tracking but animation within the frame remains the same. So if you have character movement if, there's, if you're looking at a character in a sort of firing position, that animation will not change, but if you move your head around, the head tracking will update. And that helps, that's important to reduce the chance of user sickness. It's not an ideal experience, just like uh, tearing in a game is not an ideal experience, but it's probably not going to make you vomit, so that's a good thing. Um, these things are not easy, it turns out, to measure with traditional tools like Fraps or PresentMon. We actually have no way to measure them. And you can use things like Steam's Vive FPS monitoring and frame time tracking tools, but uh, it's not the best solution and it's got some limitations. So the FCAT VR approach is twofold. One, there is a hardware solution. We set up a secondary hardware capture machine and that's one for validation. But two, there's a software solution that measures dozens of different data points and variables, creates a massive CSV file. We have some B-roll of that, I think. And, uh, and then we can take that data and start crunching it into graphs and how many warp misses are there, drop frames, what's the average latency frame to frame, what's the worst latency, what's the best latency, all that stuff we can get from there along with our traditional 1% and 0.1% lows. So on the hardware capture side, we have that one, the really important thing is FCAT is an NVIDIA tool. Of course, they say that it's fair and they are planning to release it as open source, which would allow you to look into the code, but it's still an NVIDIA tool. So we have to validate it and make sure that it's being fair. And one of the best ways to do that is with hardware capture. So we set up a secondary PC that has a vision, I think it's an SCHD4 or something. It's a pretty expensive capture card. And that has very high bandwidth. That card out of it has a splitter and into the splitter goes the uh, sort of the, uh, the HDMI from a splitter box. It actually gets really complicated. So the cables alone are the hardest part of VR benchmarking. The way the cables are set up and the connection order does matter by the way. You have the benchmarking system with the video card under test out of that comes DisplayPort to your monitor and then HDMI to a splitter box. And then out of the splitter box comes two other cables. One goes to the link box for the headset. So we've got two boxes in there and that goes to the headset, the head mounted display. So that'd be the Vive. 
And then the other cable coming out of the splitter box, not the link box, but the splitter box, goes to the capture system into that splitter. And then that goes into the capture card. And from there, you're able to record using virtual dub, which is a third party tool, the uh, actual output to the head mounted display. And then that output on it has an overlay, a VR benchmarking overlay, which cycles through something like eight colors. So we can step through each of those colors one frame at a time and see if there are any that are missing uh, or see if there are any other, other problems within the frame. Now, traditionally you would use this for looking at tearing within frames, but with FCAT VR, we're mostly looking at, are there any dropped frames? There can also be dropped frames because of improper testing. So this is a big problem with, with VR testing is that it's such high bandwidth that we have to uh, one, use a high bandwidth capture card, and two, use either RAID SSDs or something like an Intel 750. We have an Intel 750 one terabyte drive from BS Mods. Thank you, Bob and Rod, for that. And that is capable of keeping up with the recording and the capture. Uh, it's also, because it's 1.2 terabytes, capable of storing everything. And this is a big problem, too, because each one minute file or so is about 50 gigabytes. And then from there, we analyze the file, we output a CSV that says if anything's missing, we can see if it's 90 hertz, if there are any drops, and use that to validate against the software capture, which was running on the capture system, which has recorded all of the uh, frames, synthetic and otherwise, from the video card. So we can use that for validation. The next step is to compress the 50 gigabyte file, which we can do. You're probably watching one of them at some point in this video. Uh, and that is done with a script that we wrote. So we use it for our own media production. The script compresses it to 80% or smaller of the original size. Uh, well, I should say it's 80% it's smaller or greater than that of the original size. So we go down sometimes to a couple hundred megabytes, depending, and we don't really lose any quality. Uh, so that's thanks to a script that we wrote in-house. I can't release the full numbers yet. You've probably seen some examples while going through all this stuff in the video. But uh, we'll have numbers shortly if you want to look into this. The real main news item here, there is now a good way to benchmark VR. Uh, it has taken several months of back and forth with NVIDIA to get it functional. It was originally, rather than this nice interface they have now, we were using uh, actually code. So we had to modify Perl code to output the chart. We had to use code to align the benchmark data. And we also had to use things like regular expression editing uh, to, to do anything more complex. So that was really not, not easy to work with. But it's a lot better now. It's a UI. And they're going to be releasing it to the public. I think it's going to reviewers first. Uh, and we'll have numbers soon. If you're curious about it, we'll try and put a tutorial out there as well so that you can use it yourself. In terms of fairness, we'll validate that. But the hardware capture should pretty much resolve any concern of that because we're going to be able to see the actual raw output from the headset to the capture system. So that'll validate that. Uh, but that's all for now. We'll have a lot more on this. That was more depth really than I was planning to give. But go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly and help fund our testing efforts. We'll be looking at FCAT VR shortly. Hopefully OCAT once it's got a more final state. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time. 